You're watching Your View. Thank you for joining us. This is Scott Kaplan and Crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and Crew show on the mightier 1090 AM SoCal Sports Talk. Here's Scott Kaplan, Alex Padilla, and John Browner. Hey, great friends. What's happening on a Tuesday afternoon? We are on the radio airwaves of 1090 here on Kaplan and Crew. We're on the video stream of YouTube. And tonight we will make it to your television on Channel 4 San Diego, Channel 4 Santa Barbara, and it's Channel 118 Palos Verdes in Orange County. And of course, if you want the show at any time on your own time, available on all the audio podcast platforms. So we welcome you back inside the Seven Mile Casino Studios of Kaplan and Crew with Grande and the Brown Man. If you're just getting with us, we started today's show talking about what I think is really the biggest story going, not locally, not Padres, not, not regionally. We're not talking about anything happening in Southern California per se, but really on the biggest stage that's happening in sports right now, and that is the Olympics. And the, uh, the story of the greatest U.S. Olympic gymnast, Simone Biles, bailing out of team competition because she cites, you know, where her head is, where her mental health is right now. And um, I really, really, really want to be super sympathetic to her or other athletes who are having mental health related issues. Cause I've talked about this, how I was a jerk in my past. I, I told the story there. Were, I'll never forget it, man. I'm telling you right now, there was a traffic jam in San Diego and it was hours and hours and hours. People were stuck in traffic because there was a guy threatening to jump off the Coronado Bridge. And me being young and insensitive, I was saying, go ahead, jump, let's go, man, get traffic flowing. And I felt like a jerk uh, years later when mental health came into my life and did its damage, not to me personally, but to my family. And so I felt really bad about it. I want to be as sensitive as possible. Should we be trying to uh, reach people before they shoot up movie theaters or schools? You're damn right. But this is not what we're talking about. We're talking about sports and athletes and pressure and, and performance and expectations um, and, and lots of money. And so I'm kind of, I want to be sensitive to Simone, but I also hear the other side, which is where Browner has started here this afternoon. Browner, lay out your case for everybody who's just getting with us. So I, I agree with you. I think all of us feel the same way about the mental health aspect of this and that people should be heard. They should be listened to when they start speaking about their mental health. But the position that she is in, this is what athletes go through. This is what being a great athlete is all about. When she put all that work in to get to where she was, to then at the last second, bail on the team aspect of this. Because she said that she was – uh, doing this for other people. Yeah, that portion of it you were. It was a team for exercise. It was a team situation. Now, if she had pulled out of the individual I guess, for exercise, okay, that's a different discussion. You're not letting anybody down but your sponsors. And I don't think you're going to be doing that. So when you let the team down, and it's not a physical injury, it's more of a mental injury, I just hope that when we hear these people, we don't just then let it be what it is because there are other people who worked just as hard as she did as a team to accomplish a specific goal. And as a group, she let those people down. I understand that we're concerned about mental health these days. And I understand that young people feel like they need to voice their opinion and voice how they feel about mental health awareness. I get all that. I was on Naomi, Naomi Osaka's side when she didn't want to do press conferences. Understood that. But this ain't that. This is far from that. This is like, you're the greatest at what you do. It's okay to lose publicly. As you win, sometimes you lose. Losing is a part of success. I know that doesn't sound like it is, but trust me, it is. You don't learn how to be a great winner without some type of adversity without getting some losses under your belt. And she backed out because she wasn't she wasn't performing at her peak condition. You know it that, happens. You know, you know that ESPN was running a bottom line, you know, one of those bottom line news. Breaking tables, news. You know, and here's I wrote it down. Um, Simone Biles, um, you know, I don't remember ex exactly the phrase that they used about her, you know, choosing to, to not be in the competition. Anymore, Simone bows out. That wasn't the headline they used. Didn't, didn't work the first time. It was, didn't work the it, second yeah. time. It did, um, it did. She, the quote was, and this is what ESPN was running, um, 
she left the team competition because, quote, she had not a physical injury, an injury to my pride. Oh, an injury to my pride. I mean, look, Alex, put up on the screen for everybody. Let, let's take a look at her quote and uh, and you can read it to us and we can all, again, go deeper into this conversation. So, yeah, this was after in the mix zone. She said, just my pride is hurt a little bit. After the performance that I did, I didn't want to go into the other events, so I thought I would take a step back. I have to focus on my mental health and not jeopardize my health and well-being. But that's not je- <sighs> that's not jeopardizing. You, you lost. That's part of competition, winning and losing. That's why we as a country, that's why individuals compete. That's why we love competition because sometimes – there is a loser. That's the, sometimes sometimes the favorite doesn't win gets, because he or she doesn't perform. Just because you don't want to see somebody lose, just because you don't want people to see you lose, that is not a reason to not compete. I, I'm sorry. I get it. She says it was she cited her mental health. I get that, but that quote doesn't match up with what the mental health issues that people are speaking of. Her not wanting to lose because her pride got hurt, that's competition. When you get beat, you don't feel good about it. That's what brings out the winner. I, I... Yeah, so I don't know. If, I, I, I get that quote makes it seem like she just pretty much said no mas. You know, like yes. she said, I don't want to do this. But if, if she had other quotes where she's talking about how she didn't feel right, she's never felt this way before. You know, we've all seen what panic attacks can do to somebody, how yes. debilitating it could really be how anxiety is crippling to some people. I've seen it in my own life. You know, I've seen what it can do. If she was getting to that point, then I understand that. So I don't really know. I don't know because she just did a quick mix zone press conference. So later on, when she comes out and really explains herself as to what happened, then maybe we can deep dive into it. You know, we can speculate that she just quit, that she was losing and she didn't want to, she didn't want to play no more. She took her ball and went home. Yeah. Right. Like that's what we could speculate. I don't know if she's on the verge of having some sort of panic attack. And, but my biggest thing, and I said this last segment, it's I'm just curious to see the, all her defenders and all the people saying that this is great and all the people that are saying this is this is the right thing to do, that mental health comes over anything. What happens when it's not Simone Biles, someone that's just universally loved? You know, it's very rare to have a universally loved athlete like right. Simone Biles is. You know, there's she's never done anything Michael wrong. Phelps. She's the, she is the greatest. No, even Phelps had his detractors. He had a lot of off the off the pool uh, stuff. Off the pool. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so my my own my question is like, what happens when it's not someone like Savon Biles? Are we gonna continue to universally praise and, and accept that this is just the way it is? Is this the new generation of athlete that we're now gonna have to, I guess, get used to because it's a change of pace? So I'm just curious, like. Simone is one athlete in a sport that no one cares about except every four years. This is the biggest stage, the only time that people care about gymnastics. So my question is, when this hits mainstream sports, what is this going to look like? Is everybody is everyone going to be like Browner? My qu- is everyone going to start jumping ship? Let, let my question this. is this: when, when she was filming all those commercials up until this point, she wasn't mentally not there for those things. This comes with the territory. This comes with the notoriety that you earn, that pressure you feel to succeed, to not be embarrassed. That's how you got to where you're at. Yeah, but let me ask you this question. If hypothetically, okay, LeBron James Mm -hmm. and the Lakers make it to the finals this upcoming NBA season, okay, and it's game seven of the finals, and LeBron says, hey, you know, look, the reality is I'm healthy. Just – my head's not there. Something's wrong. I don't know what's going on with me. I'm actually going to sit out game seven. You know, I got a uh, mental health. I got to deal with this. Do you think that America is celebrating him being willing no. to talk about this? Or do you think America is ripping LeBron James? You know, um, if let's use another example, let's go back to the Olympics. Could you imagine if Michael Phelps had said this a couple of years ago? Like, Hey, you know what? Um, I know I've, I've, I've really been the greatest swimmer in U.S. history, and I know I'm on the relay team here, and I know we're expecting to win gold, but my head, something's wrong. I'm out. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving the team. 
do you think people would just have been so utterly sympathetic? I'm just asking because I don't really know. But here's what I do think. I think that we're talking about a young woman. I think that um, that this is now, as Alex is pointing out, this is now this, you know, this is now the second time because we had Osaka, the, the tennis player, and she was celebrating, you know. Um, and I just think that Alex is right. This is a new generation of young people that are that mental health is is more they're more conscious. And instead of it being like old schoolers like me and you, Browner, who are going, you got to tough it out. You got to push through it. You got to perform. You got a responsibility to your team. Um, that is no longer a popular opinion. That is a that is a very um, that is that is no longer a politically correct opinion in this country. It's, it's I, amazing. I say what I say and I believe what I believe because I want her to be successful. The moniker of the goat that she wears on her leotard, I want that to be real. I want little girls to look up to her and see that when she was going through a tough time, she still fought through it. This idea that people like me or people who have the take that I have are jumping on her for, for, for being mentally weak, and that's not what's happening here at all, zero. What people... What I'm going to speak for me. What I think she should have done is competed with her team, win or lose. End of story for me. Because if you stop, if you decide to join a team, you go as the team goes. That's the most valuable lesson you can learn in competition, that you either all win together or you all lose together. Now, second, winning the silver is not losing. You won, you, you still won but you didn't get what you expected. And so it's it's upsetting. But Kyrie Irving did this exact same thing, by the way. We said, oh, what if a male does this? What if a male? He did. Kyrie Irving did this. And we rained down on him. Yeah, I mean, I used that example earlier. I know. I, I'm, Alex, can you play for all of us um, Simone's uh, press conference? Yeah, it's a little difficult to hear, but yeah. All right, take a listen to this. Um, to focus on my well-being and, you know, there's more to life than just gymnastics and it is very unfortunate that it has to happen at, at this stage because I definitely wanted this to look and feel a little bit better, but again, take it one day at a time. We're going to see how the rest goes. All right. So, hey, there's more to life than gymnastics and uh, it's unfortunate that it happened right here. Let me ask you this. Will, will America's opinion change? Because right now, again, I think she's being celebrated for her willingness to share her struggle. But I'll just ask this question. If she decides to come back and compete in the individual gymnastics she will. competition, and she wins gold in the, um, and let's just say she wins gold, will people look at her and go, now, wait a second, when you had some poor performances by your standards in the team competition, you decided that you didn't want to do it anymore, citing your mental health issues, but you got yourself together and you went out and won gold and you were at your best. It will be celebrated as getting through, uh, pers persevering through whatever, you know, it's just going to be celebrated because there's a solid chance that she takes tomorrow off and she comes back on <laughs> Thursday and wins a bunch of golds right. for individual. Like it's very possible. I, I feel bad for those other three women. I don't. I, we need to celebrate those women. Jordan Childs and Sonny Lee, the two other gymnasts that filled in for her, no one knows their names. They should know her names. She, because they're the two that were expecting the GOAT to be there. Yes. And then they weren't, and they still went out and won silver. So Jordan Childs and Sonny Lee need a huge shout-out for filling in for, for Simone Biles. Jordan filled in two, for two uh, of the events, and then Sonny filled in for one. So those two girls need to be celebrated just as much, if not more, than Simone Biles because they're the ones that that fought through, like, wait, wait, you're not going to perform? Like, what do you mean Simone Biles is not going to do this? I got to step in, and they still came in and won silver. I think the fact that she stood up there wearing that medal is unfair, again, to those other girls. Well, she's still part of it. That this, this is my opinion. The three women up there with her, will never be able to honestly speak about how they feel about what she did. It'll maybe 10 years from now, they'll write a book about it. But in that moment, they are not allowed to speak freely about how they, well, I, I guarantee nobody even asked her Well, when she told you guys, she couldn't compete. What did you think? Like uh, who did anyone ask them questions? Alex, you're right. 
There should I don't even know who they are, and that's wrong of me to not know who they are because those are the ones who actually competed and brought the medal home. They were asked about it. Uh, Sonny Lee says, in that moment, we knew all we needed to come together as a team and build that leadership together because we didn't have Simone. She came out and gave us a pep talk, which was very helpful because we probably wouldn't have gone through it without her. Uh, Grace McCollum said, I'm really proud of everybody for really stepping up. It's really hard to lose the best in the world, and we definitely felt a little more stressed. I think we did amazing. We really fought. What they, so they asked them about oh, it. They got stressed. They didn't quit. Huh. Interesting. All I can tell you guys is this. I was watching on Sunday, and I saw Simone Biles in the uh, balance beam competition. And on the balance beam, like, like I'm watching her, and I'm like, wow, look at her. She's incredible. Um, look at her physique, like the way her body as an athlete, as a gymnast looks like strong legs and just muscular. And she just like, wow, that's the best in the world. And she's doing her balance beam. And at the very end of the balance beam, she goes to do her dismount. And, you know, that's when they go all the way across the beam and they do like cartwheels and jumps. And at the very end of it, they jump up in the air and they do a bunch of spins and somersaults and then they they land. Right. And when she landed, it didn't go well. And it wasn't like where she landed and she had to like take a step. I mean, she bounced and bounced and bounced almost to the point where she had one of her legs, her feet off of the cushion, like onto the next level. I don't know any of the gymnastics terminology, the mat. She had her, <laughs> she had like half of her body on one mat and half of her body on another mat. And it, it was not a good landing, you know? And I thought to myself, wow, I mean, like she's the best of the best. And that was not her best. And, you know, you, you work all this. I always think about it like this. Like if you were an Olympic uh, figure skater in the winter games and you've spent four years mastering figure skating and you've gone through the trials and you've gone through the national championships and you get there on the biggest of stages and then what happens? You fall. You've practiced this routine a hundred thousand times. You know everything you're about to do, but then something goes wrong. Well, you've spent four years of your life practicing for one moment in time and you failed. That happens. That's live competition. Jeez. And when I look at Simone, I just wonder, she, she's been working for all this time. She's been, she's turned, she's become rich and famous as a result of her previous Olympic glory. And now the weight of the world is on her shoulders. And when she doesn't perform up to her best, what that does to her head. She's made this look very easy for a very, very long time. It's not. <laughs> like, and and there, here's the evidence. The best ever at it had an off day. It happens. I just, I just wish at times like these, like, where's the coach? Like, where's someone to say, wait, are you okay? She could have physically I think I'm Brown, fine. But, but I think, Brown, I don't mean to cut, I mean, do mean to cut you off, but I do think that coming from it, like in this old, like not old school, you're coming from it from this, this competitor mentality where you battle through it, right? Like, you just have to fight through whatever you're, you have, you're going through. That's just the way we, the three of us, I think, came up as athletes. Like, Whatever level you played in, you battle through whatever. Get it out of your head. Focus on the game. Focus on the game. Don't worry about what's happening anywhere else, right? That's Everybody grew up with that. But for Simone Biles, like, she has quotes where she's saying, like, this makes me a better competitor. Like, being having the ability to bow out makes me a better person and competitor. It's a different mentality. And I'm telling you guys right now, you may not like it. You may not agree with it. Okay. And I don't necessarily agree with okay. it. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Browner. You need to start getting used to it I will because it's changing. Tell that to the person who writes you the checks. Tell that to them. You don't think you don't think tell it to Gatorade them. and Nike are gonna flip this into like a oh, huge positive marketing sure. campaign? They the first time they will celebrate, this. They will well, celebrate yeah. this. You the think first she's time lose endorsements? The, you might get more. Listen, the first time, yeah. Bow out bow out bow out again. Don't, well, don't do the different for don't do the see, individual. No, but see, it's different for for gym, for like Olympians, dude. They they compete once every four years. Wait, wait, like Michael Phelps made. I I I literally looked at because he was in the studio yesterday. My fiance asked me like, how much does Michael Phelps make for a Reese's peanut butter cups co commercial? And I looked it up. In 2019, he made 75 million dollars in endorsements. He competes for two weeks out of four years. Mm -hmm. 
You know, Nike, right, you, McDonald's, Gatorade. This is going to be flipped into the giant, you, this giant marketing campaign. You here. are helping, she ain't losing any. You're helping me make my point. Michael Phelps competes for two weeks and makes seventy five million dollars over the next four years. He competed. If you don't get out there, there ain't no money to be made. Uh, okay, I'll disagree with that. I'll, I'll throw yeah. this at you, Browner. You ready for this? 100%, dude. How about Look this? At Twitter. How, wait, Look at wait, the reaction. Wait, how about this? Here we go. I think in Twitter's the world. Well, wait, wait a second. How about Colin Kaepernick? Mm -hmm. Look, look what happened to Colin Kaepernick, how Nike turned what many people thought was a negative because he can't play anymore because nobody wants him on their team anymore. And look how Colin Kaepernick has been turned into from a commercial standpoint, from mm -hmm. a making money standpoint. They've turned his story into the story of a hero. The exact same thing will happen with Simone Biles. She's a hero because she had the courage to come out and say the things that she said. And I, I'm with Alex on this. You know, I, I really think that companies will use this to their advantage. We'll see. You got 10 seconds. You got 10 seconds. We got to we'll see. That's it. We'll see. All right. We're in the seven mile casino studios coming up a controversy that I didn't even know I got myself into. And it has completely blown up and probably cost me a job. I'll explain coming up. <laughs> We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and the surrounding areas. Hey, Dave Smith here. Make sure you listen to my show on the Mightier 1090, 6 to 10 p.m. Saturday and Sunday night. The only local sports talk in all of Southern California on the weekends right here on the Mightier 1090. The all-new and Mightier 1090. Extend it for another month at BMW of San Diego. Get 0.9% APR for 36 months on all in stock 2017, 2018, and 2019 BMW certified models. Now until July 31st, 2021. BMW San Diego. Kearney Mesa Road in the 163. At La Jolla Cosmetic, we try to help people achieve well-being. And we feel that it's not only important to look good, but also feel good inside. And honestly, what a better opportunity to help my community than being a supporter of an organization such as Las Patronas. The mission of Las Patronas is to provide financial assistance to local nonprofits that are providing valuable community services in the areas of health, education, social services, and cultural arts. La Jolla Cosmetic has been one of our biggest supporters at Las Patronas, so we couldn't do what we do without their support. You feel the need and you see the need because we go to visit each uh, grant applicant partnering with groups that are actually dedicated to help your community it's the best thing that you can do as a responsible business extended for another month at bmw of san diego get 0.9 percent apr for 36 months on all in stock 2017 2018 and 2019 bmw certified model now until july 31st 2021 bmw san diego kearney mesa road in the 163 time now for kaplan accrued tonight's community connect Shelter to Soldiers selects dogs from shelters and rescue groups all throughout California. Our ideal candidate at Shelter to Soldier is eight months to a year and a half old. They're confident in different environments. They have strong social drive. Uh, another motivator like food or toy drive. And ultimately, these are dogs that want to have a job uh, and that have a greater purpose to become a service dog. Currently, about 85% of our dogs pass their service dog training. But if they don't pass, they become a career change. Uh, we don't like to use the word failure around here. Um, so career change to an emotional support animal, or if that doesn't work out, then they career change to a pet dog. Still finding a loving placement and purpose in life.
Welcome to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank and our 90,000 square foot facility. We feed 350,000 people every single month. Many people ask, how can I help? You can volunteer for the San Diego Food Bank. Just go to sandiegofoodbank.org, register to volunteer. No group is too small, no group is too large, but those volunteers are integral to our success in feeding the community. Another way you can help is by hosting a food drive. Just go online and register your group, your company, your organization. It's that easy. Another great way is through our virtual food drive, where you can literally buy food on our behalf. Lastly, another great way to make an impact is to go online and make a financial contribution to the San Diego or North County Food Bank. On behalf of the San Diego Food Bank, our staff, our volunteers, and the 350,000 people we serve every month, thank you for helping us fight hunger and feed hope in San Diego County. It's Pharrell here inviting you to catch my shows on the Mightier 1090. We're on twice every Monday through Friday, 1 to 3 p.m. and 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific. Trust me, all the other sports stations are sleeping with your wife. The all-new and Mightier 1090. Sometimes they say it might work, it might not work. And so I ask myself the question, like, why even get the vaccine if it can also harm you? For me, it's like taking a 50-50 uh, chance. Hi, Andrea. Some say that the vaccine is harmful or that it might not work, but that's not true. Millions of people have been vaccinated with no ill effects, and I can tell you that getting the vaccine is far safer than not getting it. Welcome to the Jacobs and Cushman San Diego Food Bank and our 90,000 square foot facility. We feed 350,000 people every single month. Many people ask, how can I help? You can volunteer for the San Diego Food Bank. Just go to sandiegofoodbank.org, register to volunteer. No group is too small, no group is too large, but those volunteers are integral to our success in feeding the community. Another way you can help is by hosting a food drive. Just go online and register your group, your company, your organization, it's that easy. Another great way is through our virtual food drive, where you can literally buy food on our behalf. Lastly, Another great way to make an impact is to go online and make a financial contribution to the San Diego or North County Food Bank. On behalf of the San Diego Food Bank, our staff, our volunteers, and the 350,000 people we serve every month, thank you for helping us fight hunger and feed hope in San Diego County. Here's Kaplan Accrued tonight's 60-second timeout with Haley Stasiak. San Diego native Kelsey Plum is in Tokyo playing women's three-on-three -three basketball for the United States. The sport made its Olympic debut this year. It has a 12-second shot clock, no coaches, no stoppage after made baskets. It's played on a half court, and the winner is the first to 21 points or whoever leads when time expires. Plum, a La Jolla County Day alum, hit the game-winning shot versus China on Monday to clinch the top seed in Wednesday's semifinals. The current Las Vegas Aces guard had 10 points against China and earlier in the day had three points, four assists in the U.S.'s win against Italy. The U.S. was the only unbeaten team left in the 18 field heading to the final round of pool play, but host country Japan was able to end that streak this morning with a 20-18 win. The U.S. women will take on France on Wednesday with the bronze and gold medal games taking place later in the day. That's your 60 second timeout. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight. Kaplan and Crew tonight's 60 second timeout is presented by Your View. Classic Game Time. The best games from the past season on your view. It's like the spirit of Greenwood is all over the place uh, in Tulsa, North Tulsa specifically. It's like it's not just one location anymore. This is the beginning. This is a launching pad. This is not uh, something that we just did to come together just for this moment. The Spirit of Greenwood is brought to you by Multicultural Health Foundation. The vaccine can protect us. Will you? Verify and trust. 
We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. You're watching Kaplan and crew tonight powered by the mightier 1090 in your view, featuring the best sports talk in SoCal. Hey, great friends. Welcome back to the Seven Mile Casino Studios here of Kaplan and Crew, along with Grande and the Brown Man. I said before the last uh, segment ended, we were talking about the Simone Biles controversy. And I was telling you guys that coming up, I got myself embroiled in a controversy. Didn't even realize I did it. Um, and now it's gotten to the point where, honestly, like I really don't know what will happen this week. Um, and I'm trying to decide if I should take control of it on my own or I should wait and let somebody else make a decision for me. And I guess really I'll throw it to you guys and get your opinions, but let me just back up. Alex and Browner, come on into this. I didn't even realize this yesterday, but Alex, you brought it up to me. You're like, what happened this morning on KUSI? What, what happened? Mm -hmm. Cause you started to get some messages from people saying, well, what's up with your boy Kaplan and what happened with KUSI? Is that, is that what happened yesterday afternoon? Yeah, I got a text from a buddy who was like, hey, I see Scott's Scott's getting some heat for what he said on KUSI this morning. And I was like, well, what did he say? And he never replied. So I went on KUSI myself and I did see that they posted a, a clip of your morning show appearance talking about how uh, the Vikings fired the coach that didn't get vaccine, vaccinated. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, so what happened was, and here, read the read the tweet, because, Browner, I know you'll have a strong opinion about this, but th this, I didn't even know about it. And then let me tell you something. My Twitter blew up, and my Instagram really blew up. But go, go back to the tweet, Alex, and if you don't mind, read the tweet for everybody. because Radio host Scott Kaplan shames and demeans all <laughs> NFL players who won't get vaccinated, daring them to retire. Kaplan gladly agreed with the Vikings' decision to fire their assistant head coach for not taking the vaccine. Okay, what what is the and way? I believe it's they posted that same thing on Instagram, right? Yeah, they posted so, these. Yeah, so yeah, yeah if, so re, what, they they posted the exact same, exact same. same thing. Yeah, yeah. Now Instagram went nuts. Well, I, I see. Yeah, like just because you told me before, like the the comments are crazy. So I started scrolling through the comments. And you know it's crazy when Tommy Laren is replying on your stuff. No way. Who's yeah. Tommy Laren? She's a, I believe, a Fox News. Yeah, pundit. she's big time. Yeah. She, everybody hates her. Yeah. What did she say? She said, "Freedom is still honored." Whatever that means. Okay, I don't know who she is. I mean, listen, if, if she's if she's mad at you, that's good you for you, good, bro. Man. That's good for you. Everybody hates her or loves her. So it, right. it's really a very funny thing what happens. Um, if you go back and you read the tweet one more time, just tell me this. How do you guys receive what they have tweeted? You know? Because well, I, I know I know what KUSI, how it leads. Right, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. So I kind of was like, yeah, that's a... To me, okay, how about this? As a content creator, I thought it was a fantastic headline. So did I. I thought it was exactly they knew exactly what they were doing when they posted it yeah. and they got the response that they were hoping for okay i agree and in fact i uh, i received a call from someone there and and you know listen it, it's interesting how people reply to this for example um i'm looking at some of these comments on instagram because my instagram blew up and i went there are so many people that i actually know personally like i actually know them <laughs> that are crushing me on Instagram. I, I'm blown away by it. I'm absolutely blown away that like, like, like somebody who I, who has my phone number, who could pick up the phone and call me and I would answer the phone like, Oh, Hey, what's up, man? Like goes on Instagram to beat the hell out of me. Like he's a loser. He's an idiot. He doesn't, nobody <laughs> listens to him. He spews garbage. He should be fired. I mean, all these, these are people, I actually know them. This is how angry these people were about my commentary about NFL players. And let me state it for the record yet again, because I'm not backing away from it. If I'm a player in an NFL locker room and I'm one of 53 guys on an active roster and 50 of us are vaccinated and three guys aren't and one unvaccinated player gets COVID and we have to forfeit a game and we all lose our game checks, well, guess how I interpret that person to be? I, I think that that person is selfish. 
I took the vaccination. I'm here ready to play. And by the way, the vaccination doesn't guarantee that I'm not going to get COVID, but I got the vaccination. I'm ready to play. I want to get paid. I want my team to win games. And you, Mr. Unvaccinated teammate, you didn't. And now we're in this situation where we're not getting paid. To me, that is selfish. And by the way, I promise you this, the players in the NFL that are not vaccinated are in the minority. Most teams in the NFL have already reported that 60% have gotten it, 80% have gotten it. Some teams have reported 90%. The bottom line is the majority of NFL players have already been vaccinated. Okay, so if the unvaccinated player brings COVID into the locker room and we have to forfeit the game and forfeit our money and the other team wins and they don't get paid either, the, the owners have decided to pressure the players in this way. I'm talking about the NFL. For everybody that now is referring to me as a communist, <laughs> hey, guys, listen, you don't want to get vaccinated? Don't get vaccinated. Oh, I didn't want to get God. vaccinated. I didn't want to. I said I'm young. I'm healthy. I never got COVID. I'm taking proper precautions. I don't know what's going in my body. I don't. But I did it because I thought, you know what? I'd like to get back to life, number one. And number two, I want to be, I want to protect other people as well. I'm not just thinking about myself. I'm thinking about other people too. And so when KUSI wrote that headline, Alex, you just said it really well. As a content creator, I can appreciate what they wrote. I understand the notion of clickbait. Now, somebody writes on Twitter, KUSI sucks, and I like that tweet. And what do you <laughs> think happens? Now KUSI is pissed at me. And I went, well, hold on a second. You guys <laughs> wrote the headline. I'm fanning the flames. So, so why would you guys get upset with me when you wrote the headline, you wanted it to be clickbait, you wanted more views, you wanted more video views, you wanted more comments, you got exactly what you wanted. I fed you the content, you didn't disagree with it, but then you disagreed with it by putting it out on Twitter and Instagram. You've got a whole bunch of anti-vaxxers out there that now hate my guts, you know, that now think I'm a communist, okay? And... I, if somebody said, well, KUSI this or KUSI that, and I liked it because they were kind of on my side, now KUSI is upset. I'm like, what are you guys upset about? You got out of it what you wanted, and I'm fanning the flames. I'm not quitting. You're not firing me. But I will say this, by Monday of next week, I don't think they'll put me back on the air. Yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. What One, one thing they do understand is controversy because controversy sells and people will show up to hear what you have to say. That's kind of the whole point of them having you on. I think the point that I've arrived with a lot of these people who feel this way about what the NFL is choosing to do is, if you have to wear a uniform to work, how about you go to work not wearing that uniform? See if they send you home. Or if work tells you, you gotta be here by nine. You keep showing up at 10 because you want to show up at 10 because you think 10 is fair to you or not having to wear a uniform is fair. You're not comfortable in that uniform. They'll tell you to get another job. Nobody said this guy can't go be a college coach. Nobody said he can't go coach anywhere else. The Vikings have a standard in which they want to uphold. If you don't meet that standard, you got to go work somewhere else. That's it. That's it. California and New York are now requiring all their uh, uh, first responders to be vaccinated. If you don't want to do that, go work somewhere else. It ain't that hard. This, this is the road we've Hold come on, to. Though. Hold on. Time out, everybody. Because the story is not about the coach anymore or the vaccine. Who cares about that? The story is Scott Kaplan getting dragged by the anti-vax community and KUSI being upset at Scott for some reason. That's the story here. I don't care about Rick Dennison anymore because guess what? The Vikings brought him back. He's now an offensive advisor who's going to sit up in an office in a quarantine bubble and no one can talk to him, but he's an advisor for the Vikings again. Congrats, Rick. Scott, what, what do you mean they're not going to bring you back on Monday? Well, That's the story here, Brown. Okay. I mean, we right, already, right, we've already right. explained our stance on the vaccine. But, I, look, but, I, but I've worked there before. I know I how they operate. Most okay. people haven't. I want, I want, to, be, I want to be open and honest about this. And if, if what I'm about to say makes KUSI choose not to bring me back, then so be it. You know, um, listen, they pay me not a lot of money. The money that they pay me, I appreciate, but I promise you it's not going to change my life, make it or break it. Okay. But I like it. I like being on the air with, with Paul Rudy on Mondays. Um, truth be told, 
I'm surprised at how much exposure it brings to me personally and to the radio show. So I know you guys don't watch on Monday mornings. And I know that the demographic that watches morning television is definitely an older group of people because everybody who ever mentions anything to me is an older person. Okay. I was in a bar in Del Mar two weeks ago and this lady walked up to me and she was in her fifties or sixties and she said, Hey, I know you. I watch you on KUSI every Monday. I told you the story of a couple of weeks ago. I was down at the Padres game guy sitting right next to me says, excuse me, if you don't mind my asking, are you the sports analyst from KUSI? I'm like, th this surprises me how many people actually see me on that channel? Cause I'm not watching local TV. Alex, you're, you're smiling and snickering. Because... Yeah, because you say that about, you say that about all of our platforms. I'm surprised people watch our TV show. I'm surprised people listen. Up. People listen, dude. People watch. I mean, it's just a I'm fact about it. I'm happy <laughs> about that. I'm happy. Okay. I'm happy people watch and listen, but here's the thing. Let me, let me just tell you how this all works though. KUSI is not apologizing for being a right leaning news organization. You know, that's who they are. They're not, they're not apologizing for that. And whoever has got his fingers and I know who it is, the person who has his fingers on their Twitter account and their Instagram account, that is a young person who is being celebrated internally as this person has made our social media accounts relevant. They, and I'll tell you who it is. It's the owner's son. Now, now that that's, that's the situation. They're a family run business. The daughter is, is a reporter. She's doing a great job. She's a really, really talented young reporter grown up around the news business. She's on the local channel. That's her, what her family owns. And the son runs the social media. And so they've got the young, the next generation already in place. So the son writes this, this clickbait headline, which I, again, I thought was, that's what you should do is write clickbait headlines. But what he did was he definitely came at it from a, we don't agree with what he said. He's demeaning these people. He's shaming these people. And hey, anti-vax community, let's all jump on this guy. Now the vax community had my back and said, how dare they? You're a weekly guest and a contributor to their station. You weren't some random guy from out of town that just came on their air and said something controversial and then they just decided to beat up on you. You're a weekly contributor to their channel. Why are they doing this to you? And I say, the reason they're doing it is because that's the goal. The goal is to get as many views and as many clicks as you can. I can appreciate that. So when I like something that's not, hey, KUSI, you're the best, but rather, hey, KUSI, you suck for what you did. When I like that, as I explained to them, I'm fanning the flames. You started it. I'm perpetuating it. Is that not what you wanted? You can dish it out, but you can't take it. Look, I got, I don't, I got I, fixed I don't think... in on this kind of stuff and it'll circulate and it'll be over really quickly. But it's like I told these guys, I'm like, listen, if you guys don't want me back on the, on the air on Monday, I will get it. But I'm tr what I'm trying to decide, and you guys should help me out with this is, should I wait for them to come to me and go, hey, you know what, dude, no more. Because you guys realize that if you watch the video that Alex had on Twitter, they blanked out the Seven Mile Casino sign. They legitimately blanked it out because this is not a paid advertiser on their channel. It's a paid advertiser on ours. And this is my home studio. This is where I do all this content from. They don't get a piece of this pie. So they blanked it out to not give free advertising. So there's, there's I, I don't a whole understand. Bunch. But okay, I, don't, I guess I don't I'm missing part of the story here because yeah, what yeah. is the... I don't understand what, what people are upset about. Like what, like on what, in what planet would KUSI be mad that they posted an Instagram clip and a Twitter clip and it blew up? Like just, you said it on their airwaves. If they didn't agree with it, they wouldn't have posted it. And not even agreeing with it. If they had a real issue with it, they wouldn't post. There's a certain, there's certain things that have been said on our show that I'm like, I should probably not post that. Even though I know it'll get a ton of clicks. Like, it's just the way you, it's like a filter in our own brains. So what is the issue here? I don't understand. I, I don't get the issue at all. I think for the most part, I don't even think you're mad that they, they did this because you understand the business. I think their reaction to you commenting is really what's bothering you. Like they, if you're going to do something like this, they also have to understand who they're, who they're. Why ask I mean, you about it then? Right. I, they don't I, they have to understand the person who they're dealing with and that you are in this business. You understand this business. 
you operate in it every day, not just on Mondays. So if they if they are writing something in the comment section and it's going one way, you have a right to take your own take your own side in the comment section. Are you not allowed to now comment in the comment section? Like, By the way, if their producer did any sort of research, they would have known your stance before asking you if they didn't want right, to ask you about right, it. Right, right. And by the way, and listen, I, I wrote my first comment yesterday on Twitter was nice clickbait. Now, now nobody has a problem with me saying nice clickbait, but somebody has a problem with me liking a tweet that says that they suck. Well, guess what? Um, half the they audience- do suck. Well, listen, half, half, half the audience, half the audience hates me. I thought you were going to say that. No, no, no. I thought you were going to say that. No. Half, half the audience <laughs> hates me because I'm pro-vax, okay? And the other half of the audience hates them because they're anti-vax, you know? And, and But to your point, Browner, you know what really did piss me off, like in real life, what pissed me off about all this? And this is something I've never said on the radio before. So last night, if you pull up the Instagram, Alex, you start to see comments from people. And you mentioned this woman from Fox News. I don't know who she is, okay? So if it's a big deal that she commented, so be it. Um, by the way, I find it really funny how many people are into freedom and freedom of choice when it comes to vaccination. And yet, guess what they are? They're vaccinated, okay? Um, but what really bothered me was that there were people that I knew that I were, me. well, there was one guy named Blake. Okay. Mm -hmm. Blake Sheldon? No, not I don't think so. No, Blake, your boy? No, 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 no. Not Blake, my boy down in Cabo. No, some other dude named Blake. This guy, Blake. And he commented about, you know, what a hack I am and what a jerk I am. So let me get this straight. My opinion is very simple. The NFL owners lost lots of money last year. You may not. Lots have, of money. You may not have sympathy for them because they're billionaires and that's fine. But. They lost a lot of money and their season. Yes, they got through all of the games, but come on. When Pittsburgh is playing Washington on Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock in the afternoon, is that good for the NFL? No. Okay. So they want the NFL wants its season to go off as close to normal as it can. Players are there and available. Coaches are there and available. Stadiums are filled with people that are buying tickets, paying for parking, buying beer, et cetera, et cetera. The NFL owners want their league back. And to get their league back, they need their players to all be as protected as they can be. So my position is very simple. If you're an NFL player and you choose not to get vaccinated, you better be such a good player that the team is willing to put up with that possibility. Aaron Rodgers doesn't get vaccinated. The Packers will have to put up with it. But Cole Beasley doesn't get vaccinated. The Buffalo Bills might think, you know what? We can find another wide receiver to fill his role. You better be an upper echelon player because if you're a middle of the road or a lower echelon player, you're not going to make the team if you're not vaccinated. You may not even get into training camp. So what bothered me was, is that last night, as now my kids are seeing this, my kids know some of these people. I'm not talking about random listeners that have, have been around the show for, for a long time. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people that we know. People who my kids go into their homes. Oh. And now, oh, no. instead, it, now I said what I said publicly. It was published everywhere. It went on television. It went on radio. It went on social media. But now you know me. You know my family. You have my kids in your home and you're going to go out there and trash me on social media like that. And, and it'd be one thing if you had a, an, a, 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 an opinion that was opposite. Hey, Scott, just so you know, I disagree. You know, I'm not vaccinated. I don't Research. want to, I don't want to get vaccinated, I, et cetera, et cetera. But instead it's actually people who we know who go on there and then trash me. You know, I don't care. I don't care. My kids yeah, cared. No, no, no. I care because my kids care because it hurt my kids' feelings. And my kids last night were like, you know what? I'm calling them and I'm saying something, or I'm jumping in on social media and I'm telling them to go F themselves. And I'm like, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Don't lower yourself to their level. That's what they want. They make these comments hoping that we'll get into a full-blown discussion. Don't do that. I mean, that, that really, that part of it, really that's kind hard of irritating that's me. yeah that's that's hard dude when your kids get involved and people you know are because you can handle it your kids are not in this industry your kids do not make their comments public 
So for them to then see something like that from someone that they know, that's very, very difficult. That's hard to combat, man, because now it's it's super personal, and it didn't have to be that way from people you know. You want to disagree with me? You If you know me in real life and you want to disagree with me on social media, so be it. No problem. But the idea of I'm going to just rip this guy apart and say all these terrible things about him because he has an opinion that's different than mine, it's just so childish and immature. You know, Is that the, the way, person who calls you a hack? No, there's other people, but there's this oh, one guy. That, and one and Blake. what's it? Look, can you put it up on the screen? Let me see if I can see that. I don't want to dox the guy. Well, who he play for? Why? Is his, name, is his uh, address on there? No, it's true. It's not. I mean, he said what he said publicly. I, I, I said really, what I uh, said publicly. It's hard to zoom in on Instagram, though. Okay, I got you. <laughs> yeah. I got you. Well, if you just put it up on the screen, though, at least what do you we would say? be able to see. Yeah, let, let, uh, Read it. Yeah, this is a guy. I promise you, my kids are in this person's home a lot. They have a different opinion. Not they're, anymore. They're right wing. They're leaning right, et cetera, et cetera. Here, can you can you read that? I don't know if this is All the right. one you're talking about. Uh, yes. Read read the comment. I didn't think someone could embarrass themselves this bad willingly, but there here we are. No one listens to this guy anyways. This is the first anyone's <laughs> anyone has heard from it only because KU is like calling him out. What a joke. Okay, so so can you, you know that guy? Yeah, yeah, I know that guy. I mean, I don't oh, know what my, my I can't even listen. My position is not gonna change. We'll be right back. Stick around. We're in the seven mile casino studio. We'll be right back with more of Scott Kaplan and crew tonight. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio. SoCal sports talk. Kaplan and crew tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer serving drivers throughout San Diego and their surrounding areas. Arash Markazi here inviting you to catch my show, The Arash Markazi Show on the Mightier 1090. We are on every Monday through Friday from noon to 1 p.m. Pacific time. Join me and producer extraordinaire G. A. Wiley where we chop up Los Angeles sports and try not to piss too many people off. The all-new and Mightier 1090. Extended for another month at BMW of San Diego. Get 0.9% APR for 36 months on all in stock 2017, 2018, and 2019 BMW certified models. Now until July 31st, 2021. BMW San Diego, Kearney Mesa Road in the 163. People often ask me, what is the Ronald McDonald House? We are a home away from home for families with a child in medical crisis. We opened our doors in 1980, and ever since then, our job has been to support families who have a child in the hospital. And those families often have kids who are very sick or perhaps injured. And we're literally five minutes from the bedside here at the Ronald McDonald House, so if a mom and dad need to get to the bedside, they can get there very quickly. If it's possible to imagine a child in the hospital, you can begin to imagine the stress that a mom and dad are under when they're in there acting as partners in care for their child. Our job really is to give them a place where they can find some respite, some relaxation for a moment or two before they head back to the hospital. If you'd like to support the Ronald McDonald House, visit our website at rmhcsd.org. You can make a donation. You can learn how to volunteer. You can learn more about exactly the programs and services we provide. There's even a wish list there so you can send or drop off the kinds of supplies we need here to care for families 24 hours a day, every day of the year. Extended for another month at BMW of San Diego. Get 0.9% APR for 36 months on all in stock 2017, 2018, and 2019 BMW certified models. Now until July 31st, 2021. BMW San Diego, Kearney Mesa Road in the 163. Kaplan and Crew tonight presents Sports in a Minute. The Tokyo Olympics are in full force and another San Diego tie that is out there in Japan is University of San Diego men's basketball alum Mike Brown. He's at the helm of the Nigerian men's basketball team. Brown played with the Toreros from 1990 to 1992. He is currently the assistant head coach of the Golden State Warriors. The USD alum led his team to two impressive back-to-back -back Olympic warm-up game wins against the United States and Argentina. In the team's first official Olympic matchup on Sunday, they suffered a tough 84-67 loss to Australia, keeping it close all game until Australia managed to pull away in the fourth quarter. Tonight, Nigeria will take on Germany, then they will close out preliminary play on Saturday against Italy. I'm Haley Stasiak, that's your Sports in a Minute. Now back to more Kaplan and Crew tonight.
Andy Gray here, inviting you to catch my show, Let's Talk Hookup, every Saturday and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Time. For over 30 years, we've been the voice of the fishing community for Southern California, and so glad to be back on the big stick. The all-new and mightier 1090. Explore the Southwest lifestyle, the culture, the music, the food, y más. Join hosts J.R. Cárdenas and Vanessa Ramirez on Subida. Enjoy the food, discover new artists, and fun things to do. Watch Subida Sunday night at 7 on Your View. Brought to you by Harris Resort Southern California. It's more than a place, it's a state of mind. Subida. Love Promise Moments are part of the mission of what we do here at Subaru El Cajon. A love promise moment is when we as human beings deliver an experience beyond exceptional to any one of our guests and then that guest's life is positively affected by that interaction. It's amazing to watch what happens when two human beings talk on that level and create something magical. And sometimes they drive away with a car, sometimes they don't, but we've had an impact on that person's life and that's the magic. You know, our employees react to things like Make-A-Wish, Feeding San Diego, and the other groups we help by jumping in. This year, through COVID, we were able to help a little girl out and got her a rather large scooter that she needed for mobility. We gave up our Christmas party as employees, and we actually adopted a wish of a young girl here in El Cajon, and we gave her a three-wheel scooter so she didn't have to use her wheelchair all the time. It gives me goosebumps even thinking about it. Let's take it up a notch with Kaplan Accru tonight's premium boost, powered by the mightier 1090. San Diego is a great place for deep sea fishing because it's home of the largest sport fishing fleet in the world. You can go on a half day trip, a full day trip, multi day trip, all the way up to 18 days to catch tuna and wahoo, or just locally here to catch yellowtail. When booking a deep sea fishing excursion out of San Diego, there's several resources and of course, the San Diego Landings have a great web pages, seaforthlanding.com, fishermanslanding.com, pointlomasportfishing.com are the perfect resource to book your next fishing vacation out of San Diego. What you need to do if to have fun in the sun while you're out fishing is of course you'll have to obtain a California fishing license or a Mexican fishing license depending on where the trip goes and then get set up with tackle. All the landings have all the tackle for rental and they'll give you all the guidance on the boat for catching a lot of fish here in San Diego. Uh, what you should wear out on the water when you're fishing here in San Diego, layers. And that's the key because you're probably not gonna get very wet uh, because uh, you're gonna go out on a nice day, but just be prepared for layers because it can get pretty cool on the water. You know, summertime is always the best from I would say June through September, but prime months actually in San Diego, September, October are probably the two prime months. Best water conditions and probably the most abundance of fish. So as far as taking your fish home, they'll fillet the fish for you on the boat and put it into a package for you. Or you can use one of the local processors like Fisherman's Processing that'll vacuum seal and freeze your fish so that you can put it in your cooler and take it home and eat it. Depending on how long your excursion is, you can go anywhere from a half day trip for around $50 plus your license, all the way up to a multi-day trip that maybe costs several hundred dollars per day. But a full day trip is gonna cost you about $150 a day, depending on the uh, Mexican license or California licenses that you need to get. Kaplan Accru Tonight's premium boost is powered by the mightier 1090. Kaplan Accru Tonight is brought to you by BMW San Diego, your certified BMW dealer, serving drivers throughout San Diego and the surrounding areas. Shelter to Soldiers selects dogs from shelters and rescue groups all throughout California. Our ideal candidate at Shelter to Soldier is eight months to a year and a half old. They're confident in different environments. They have strong social drive, uh, another motivator like food or toy drive. And ultimately, these are dogs that want to have a job uh, and that have a greater purpose to become a service dog. Currently about 85% of our dogs pass their service dog training. But if they don't pass, they become a career change. Uh, we don't like to use the word failure around here. Um, so career change to an emotional support animal 
or if that doesn't work out, then they career change to a pet dog, still finding a loving placement and purpose in life. Thank you for joining us. Catch Scott Kaplan and crew tonight from 7 to 8 p.m. Pacific, every Monday through Friday. The very best from today's Scott Kaplan and crew show on the mightier 1090 AM, a new generation of radio, SoCal Sports Talk.